Hey, you guys. Hi. Welcome here. Yeah. You guys. Yeah. OK. I'm Jane Fendelman. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming. I'm honored to be here with you today, and I'm so grateful to have you with me for the next hour. So thank you so much for coming. We're talking about enlightened parenting or parenting as a spiritual path or conscious parenting. And really, some of you have seen my book, Raising Humane Beings. I say right in the beginning, you only have two jobs as a parent. One is to live out your life purpose, to live your soul's calling, and the other is to be happy. And if you're doing the first one, you're already doing the second one. So that was easy. OK, you can go. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. So we always start with everything. Everything starts with self-observation. So I'm going to give you a little homework assignment. It's going to turn into a big lifelong homework assignment. And that is practice self-observation. So have that part of you that can sit up on the curtain rod and watch your thoughts, feelings, and behaviors as a gentle, interested observer. This is not one of your lower voices. Your lower voices are the mean liar voices that pick on you. You know those voices? Yes. Yes. The mean liar voices that pick on you. That's not your objective observer. Your objective objective observer is an unconditionally loving, benevolent presence. You can think of it as a bird's eye view or a god's eye view, however you think of that as. as. It is an unconditionally loving, non-judgmental presence. It just watches you as an interested observer. It's not picking on you. It's not telling you that you're doing something right or wrong. It's just there. So this objective observer, this part of you that can stand outside of yourself, because we don't want the brain running the show. The brain, your brain is a tool, not your master. Your brain is your tool, not your master. Where people's lives get really up is when they're letting their brain run the show. Your brain is full of old programming. And guess what your brain is going to do to your kids? What? instead of them living out their soul's calling and finding out who they were. Do you guys know that Einstein was kicked out of pr uh, practically every school he went to? I think he got kicked out of two or three colleges. Einstein. And I, I don't know, they just did a movie on his life. I was so delighted and riveted because I'm an Einstein freak. I'm a quantum physics, I'm a left brain, right brain, kind of person, like I'm a quantum physics geek and also very spiritual. And um, Einstein, who was just a brilliant mind, everyone around him when he was growing up w was telling him he was wrong <coughs> and bad and not doing the right thing. Did, did you guys see this TV series they just had on Einstein? Oh, just brilliant. And how many, did any of you guys, when you were a kid, have people tell you that what you wanted to do or be was wrong and that you shouldn't even try it? Yeah. <laughs> or that if you do try it, you'll fail? Yeah. You can't make money doing that. Yeah. 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 You should do a this. You should be a this. And imagine my surprise when one of my sayings, one of my sayings that's, and I have proof, because it's in my parenting book. Well, there's not proof, because anyway, a thing that I said in my parenting book, Raising Humane Beings, which you can get, it's on my website, you can download it, or, or it's an audio or, or a reedy, reedy thing, is um, if we told a fish that it was bad for not flying through the treetops, you're bad and wrong, because you swim in the ocean and you won't fly through the treetops and make that fish feel bad about that. That would be so stupid. We wouldn't even do that, would we? Or if we judged the heart for pumping blood instead of breathing air like the lungs do. So we take kids all the time and we tell them, you should be doing this, and especially in schools. And I started out as a teacher. When I was young, I had a teaching degree. And, the, and I didn't like school anymore as an adult than I did as a child. It just all, it all felt wrong. In fact, I tell kids this all the time. This is why kids really love me. I tell kids all the time, first of all, there's too much homework. I tell the parents, just don't, just don't do it. Just have a big revolt. Don't do the, don't do the homework. Because you miss them. 
They're at school all day and now they're at their desk all night and now you're just arguing. And oh, I tell kids all the time, the teacher shouldn't grade the kids, the kids should grade the teachers. Don't you think? The teachers should be graded. Yes. I mean, we do that in college. I don't know about your, when I got my master, my staff master's in counseling, at the end of each semester, we got forms and we graded the parents. Yeah, I mean, not the parents, the teachers. <laughs> Imagine if your kids got to grade you. Ooh. <laughs> so anyway, okay, so this, self, this objective observer voice, this benevolent, non-judgmental voice, it's just watching your thoughts, feelings, and behaviors without judging. Now, one of the reasons why I want you to especially start watching your thoughts, feelings, and behaviors is because I want you to catch the mean liar voices and name them and say, for instance, I have a mean liar voice that picks on me and tells me I'm behind. Like when I open up my email. <laughs> Do you guys ever have the feeling you're behind when you open up your email? Yeah. And there's 2,000. Do you guys have 2,000 or am I the only one? 200? That's like nothing. 4,000. See? Would you, when you open it up, one person's writing you 4,000. No, one email. I have two email accounts. Two email? Oh, yeah, I have the same. I have the same. I have three. So the 4,000 is a crap account and the other one is one I use. <laughs> and they just build up. So, so I have this mean liar voice that picks on me, and it, whenever I you know, do certain things, especially work things where I'm at the computer, and I have this mean liar voice that picks on me and tells me I'm behind. So you name your mean liar voice, so I'm gonna name this mean liar voice asshat. <laughs> so when I start feeling bad, I check out. I zip out into my objective observer, right, because that's my brain talking, that's the programming. Your brain is just a tool. There's programming stored there. So I say, I, I catch my brain running the show. Your brain is a tool. Your brain is not your master. Your brain is your servant. So I catch myself picking on myself, and I say, shut up, asshat. Stop picking on me. You have no power here. Get out of my head. OK, so right now, just go inside yourself, and I want you to pick out one of your mean liar voices, and I want you to give it a name, asshat, jerk face, mofo, <laughs> rubber ducky, chicken feathers, sledgehammer, mom, <laughs> uncle, Henry, it can be anything. OK, got it? Let me see you just uh, one at a time yell out some of your mean liar voice names. Motherfucker. Boy, yeah. <laughs> got it? Debbie Downer. Debbie Downer. <laughs> Who? Five-year-old male subconscious that's horny. A twerny? Horny. Horny. <laughs> awesome. No. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. We're going to catch him in a minute. We're going to catch him. Anybody else mean liar voice names? Satan. Satan. <laughs> okay, good. So now think about your mean liar voice name. Think about the kinds of things, mean things that mean liar voice says to you. Got it? OK, now on the count of three, I'm going to count to three. Everybody all at once is going to yell out at the top of your lungs all together, shut up, ass hat, get out of my head. You have no power here. OK, ready? Got your name? Everybody got your name? OK, one, two, three. Shut up, ass hat, get out of my head. You have no power here. Yeah. You guys are awesome. That was awesome. That was awesome. So watch, the more you observe, gently observe yourself, the more you'll notice. You have a mean liar voice that not only picks on you, it picks on other people. And even the, the benevolent, those of us that are very enlightened beings and we've been practicing self-awareness and we watch our thoughts, feelings, and behaviors, and we're observing ourselves, we still get into traffic, and there is one asshat that always cuts you off <laughs> and gets you PO'd. So, but we're human, and that's life, so we're learning. We're always learning, right? Okay, so it all starts with self-observation, right? <clears throat> so I want you to keep that in the background of you all the time. Now, one thing scary and freaky that I want you to know about your children and the, the world. All the world is your mirror. The world is your mirror. The stuff that bugs you about yourself, you'll see it in other people. You'll either see the thing that bugs you in other people, you'll attract that like a magnet. Power of attraction. Power of attraction. The law of attraction. The law of attraction. 
It's like a magnet in you. Right, like the Abraham Hicks good stuff, power of attraction. So the things in you or the things that you wish you could do. Like I had a client, she was working with me on some poverty issues. She, she didn't have much money, she wanted more money. And I said, okay, now, and we did some work on it. And I said, okay, there's gonna be a test now. And she said, okay. And I said, you're gonna have to say yes to the goodness of the universe. And she came back the very next week and she said, okay, you can't believe what happened. My sister-in-law, who's a princess, like she hated her sister-in-law. Like my brother does everything for her. Like if she says, I want that, he buys it for her. He like, when he gets up, he like brings her back a glass of water or a glass of wine, he rubs her feet. I hate her. But it's stuff that she wants, but she won't allow anybody to do for her. So she went over to visit her sister-in-law. She came back the next week for counseling. She said, you can't believe what happened. And she said, and I think I flunked. I went to my sister-in-law's house and she had this pile of clothing on her bed, really expensive clothing, and most of it still had the tags on it. And she said, you know, it's just stuff I never ended up wearing, and so I want you to pick out whatever you want, and the rest of it is going to the um, women's shelter. And she looked at all these fine, fine pieces of clothing, this gorgeous everything. There's dresses, there's skirts, there's coats, there's everything. There's jewelry. And guess what she said? No, thanks. It's too nice, I can't take that. Mm -hmm. Too nice, I can't take that. So the world, everything is here, is here to teach you. And your kids, they are gonna bug you the worst. Because you can't just walk away. You can't just go, <laughs> oh, this sucks, I'm leaving. <laughs> I'm leaving this relationship. <laughs> you can't, you can't. The little monsters are your teachers. Like when people come in, they'll come in and they've got like four or five kids. And um, I, I don't need to meet the kids to help the parents get everything turned around. And um, they'll say, what? It's Jimmy, he's, he's such a rowdy, he can't sit still, he just, he can't, he just can't behave. So they'll say like, my three or my two kids, they're so well behaved, and my one kid, oh my gosh. And I'll be like, oh, I'm so sorry about the well behaved ones. You're not gonna learn anything <laughs> from that kid. I'm so sorry you have well behaved children. That's, that's too bad. You won't learn anything. So let's just make it so that you can have this learning experience be a little easier, right? Yes. So you have two jobs. Self-observation, knowing that the world is, and watching yourself so you're not picking on yourself, and knowing that the world is a mirror. You have three jobs. You have three homework assignments so far. How do you like your homework assignments so far? You've only been here 10 minutes and you have three homework assignments. I thought you said no homework. <laughs> no homework for the kids. <laughs> There's lots of homework for the parents. <laughs> so you got self-observation, catch your mean liar voices, name them and tell them to shut up and know that the world is a mirror and that you're here to learn. So deep breath, deep breath on that. Deep breath on the, the kids. They're trying to teach you something. Like Rolla May used to, Rolla May, who was this brilliant, uh, he's dead now, brilliant dead guy, Rolla May. I don't know what he was, a shrink or a um, philosopher. He used to say the only thing that separates man from animal is this, the pause between stimulus and response. So if you're going off on your kids, if you're yelling at your kids, if you're directing and ordering them around instead of pausing and taking a breath, and um, by the way, there's a whole chapter in my book, or a whole, I don't know, two pages, paragraph or something. I don't know, I haven't read it in a long time. <laughs> it's called Yelling is Hitting with Words. Okay, now in, in a moment, one of the reasons I want you to watch yourself talk is so that you can start construing anything to be a compliment. So I write about this kid in my book too. Um, I'm about to use the B word, so I apologize. In advance, I'm going to be using the female dog word. Okay, so, okay, so this mom dragged her kid in. So this is after I'd done a lot of work on myself over a number of years, and I started learning more about self-loving. And once I started learning more about self-loving, my whole life was easier. Everything was easier. Like, used to be if something bad would happen or someone would criticize me, I would just collapse. I would just fall down to the floor or sack up, you know, a puddle of tears. So. Um, this is after, and, and I ha this is after I'd become a counselor. This is early in my practice, like 24 years ago. And this mom dragged her 10-year-old son in for counseling. He had been lying and stealing and cussing. And so she's out in the front room, and he's sitting on my couch like this. 
<laughs> and he won't talk, right? And I'm just talking to him, trying to establish a rapport. And finally, he goes like this. I'm not talking to you. You're a bitch. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I go like this. I go like this. Hmm. Sometimes I am. <laughs> <laughs> That's <was> right. <laughs> and he loved me after that. Now, why did he have to do that with me? Do you know why? Do you know why? There's no wrong answers. I mean, he had lots of reasons, but. Yeah. Find to see, to find boundaries and to see my, rea if yeah. I was going to react to yeah. that. What did you see? Fear. Fear, because he was scared, so he had his claws out. Trying to establish who was going to be dominant in the relationship. Oh. See because you'd back down. See if I would back down. And also, firm. How, would, how would a regular parent or teacher react to that? What would be a normal reaction to well, that? I was a teacher for 13 years, so um, I had that kind of uh, happen, and what I would do when I would react is in some cases, because I couldn't do that according to you know school rules and stuff like that, but instead of getting huge and loud and get out of my classroom or stuff like that, I'd be like, okay, come here, let's talk. And I would get the rest of the class working on mm -hmm. something, and then I'd talk one-on-one -on -one with the student and be like, What's up? Right. You know, so, why? so, but my question, yeah, that's a great way to handle it. What would a ordinary, run-of-the-mill, common, nobody here parent, <laughs> parent or teacher do? What would an ordinary teacher do? <laughs> yeah. What? What'd you call me? What'd you call me? How dare you? How dare you? Go to the princess. Go to your room. You didn't. No TV. No. No dessert. No nothing. No. Prom, no, nothing. <laughs> so what did that do? That just taught the kid, and I, would ha I have parents in a lot still to this day, and they'll have like their, their teen or their 13 year old or their <clears throat> child sitting next to them on the couch in my counseling room, and the child is spinning or turning around or doing his thing, <laughs> and the mom, the mom starts going, sit up, and he's, he's like, sits up for two seconds and then he starts doing his thing <laughs> and then mom says sit up and the mom says sit up like 15 times. Who's in charge there? Okay. I can make you try to control me. I'm in charge. I'm in charge of you. I can make you try to control me. Okay, so don't worry about controlling anybody else. We don't want to make, here's one of my biggest things that I've said, the biggest, the longest, and the loudest, and the most times. We don't want to make our children behave. We don't want to make our children behave or do their homework or clean their room or be, eat their peas. We don't want to make them do all those things. We want to make them want to do all those things. Like I wanted this lady with all these kids to come up to my parenting talk. And so I'm standing talking to her and can see them kind of going, yeah, I said about, okay. And I said, well, there's going to be presents. <laughs> presents, surprise, there's an incentive. There's a reward, there's inspiration. You know, I mean, if you're doing a job, I heard a statistic, um, there was a guy who wrote a book and he was going on, we were on Arizona Midday, he was going on right before me. So we met in the green room and we were talking and I got to see his whole segment before I went on, talking about, I was talking about counseling stuff. He had the statistic that 85% Adults either don't like or hate their job. It sounds low. <laughs> it sounds low. I mean, <laughs> there's one thing that I used to say as a child. It's higher. It's higher. The one thing I used to say as a child, more than I said anything else, was, "When I'm an adult, I'm going to do whatever I want." <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I have quit and gotten fired from so many jobs before I became a counselor and realized, oh, that's what I want. <laughs> and it's true, you got to do, you got to do what you want. Very, very important. So you're a bitch. Okay, I can take anything, I can construe anything to be a compliment. And also, no kid or other person is in charge of my emotions. I mean, do you really want a four-year-old in charge of your emotions? Well, when you get upset with whatever they're doing, you're putting your happiness in their hands. Why don't? Don't. 
don't. You'll see, there's a whole thing, I don't have time to teach you the whole thing now, but in my book, like one of the third, second, third chapters is called The Big Experiment. It'll help you with that. Okay, now we're going to do a thing. <laughs> okay. Okay, so first what you guys get to do is, one of the biggest cures, the thing that I'm most known for, uh, well, aside, I, I've been doing a lot of couples counseling lately, like the last year and a half, a lot of couples counseling. <clears throat> and if you're in a beloved relationship, I can tell you the more that connection is strong and healthy, the better that is for the kids. And if you're a single parent, then you do have to have your support system, really, really important. So this is really important either way, presence, fullness of presence. But back in the day, uh, right around the time I wrote my parenting book and started, I started getting invited to do a lot of TV and um, interviews about my parenting book, I was doing a lot of treating ADD and ADHD without drugs and oppositional defiant disorder and ED emotional disorder and everything. And every, everybody's kids was being were being drugged. And I know how to cure it without drugs within three to five sessions with just the parents. And I still do, I still know how to do that. And, um, and also there's a big giant chapter on that in my book too. But um, uh, one of the first fixes for any relationship, whether it's a parent-child relationship or a beloved relationship, is fullness of presence. Fullness of presence is this magical thing. Fullness of presence is when your monkey mind is not doing anything else. I have a girlfriend who calls it drunken monkey on a field trip. <laughs> you know how your mind just starts going, 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 going? Yeah. 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 Go drunken monkeys on a field trip. It doesn't let you sleep. It doesn't let you sleep. You actually ha I actually have to tell my mind when I'm laying in bed, Stop. Stop talking. Yes. Stop talking. <laughs> Stop talking. <laughs> you have to tell your brain yes. to stop the chatter. Shush. So there's this amazing magical miracle place where um, the swing of the pendulum, like we notice the movement and the lights and the colors and the sparkly stuff. That's why if you guys stopped by my booth, you saw it was all sparkly because I know, whoosh, 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 grab your attention. So, but the pendulum swings and then just for a hair second, it stops and it swings back the other way. Okay, this hair second that it stops where it's not swinging this way or this way, if you get into that hair second, you will drop down into the abyss of the omnipotent where God resides and there's nothing to do or say or be or have or get or stop or start, it just, it, it's the is, it's the all. And if you don't believe in God, just think of it as the Higgs field, the Higgs field, if you're a quantum physics geek like me, the Higgs field, all this empty space. Okay, <clears throat> now here's how we're gonna practice fullness of presence. Everybody is going to get a partner, turn toward whoever is next to you. And if we have three people, if, um, if you're comfortable, Turn to a stranger. <laughs> turn to a stranger. Whoever's right next to you, you're gonna turn to that person. So turn toward that person. Do you, do you mind sitting a little, do you mind sitting down here, honey? I know it's weird. I know it's so weird. It's so weird. We're doing it anyway. Do you need a person, Antonio? I do. How about that guy back there? Would you be brave and be with a stranger? <laughs> that was honest. Wait, what about what about what about this guy? What about that guy? Are you going with? Are you going with him? Yeah, she's with him. Do we have three people? You can be with Alex. Do you want to be with? Okay. You have three people right here, right? You guys got threes? Yeah. Alright. Okay. Okay. Good. So here's what you're gonna do. I promise I won't make this a long, long thing. I promise I'll make it brief. <laughs> so what I want you to do just to start with is look into their eyes. In fact, look, <laughs> look into, look into. I guess so. Everybody, point, point to your left eye so that your partner was, knows which one is your left eye. Point to your left eye. Look into your partner's left eye. You can put your finger down, but just. <laughs> Okay, shh, 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 
Have, did you guys notice? Did you notice how everybody got a little chatty and giggly? What just happened, and we're going to go back to it in just a second, I want you to understand what just happened. I've done this with couples who've known each other for 20 years, and they, can't, they start to giggle or cry. When we, that's intimate, that's intimacy. That's intimacy, you know, they say the eyes are the windows to the soul. The moment you guys looked into the eyes of the other person, the energy raised up and you felt a little tickly and giggly and talky. But I want you to do this nonverbal. This is gonna be zero talking. Because I want you to really get what I'm talking about, the omnipotent, because this is the thing. If your kid has any diagnoses, any ADD, any ADHD, any trouble, troubled behavior, it's, because, it's mainly because of loneliness. Relationship issues too, it's mainly because of loneliness. And loneliness comes from a busy, 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 busy culture where we're always late and the kids, we always have to get somewhere. Or they can't get heard, they can't get you to listen. You don't know who they are because you're trying to get them to be someone or go somewhere. Okay, so look into your partner's left eye, don't talk. You can laugh, you can cry, but you can't talk. Take a deep breath. As you're looking into their eye, just notice if there's any flecks of color or if there is any sadness or joy in there or loneliness. And now give them a hug or a handshake. <laughs> That was really good. Pick a stone and pass it down. Oh, pick the, pass the stone down. Thank uh, you. Pick a stone and pass the thing down. There's a song I need off my phone, so we have to stop my phone for a minute. That's good, though. Yeah. Thanks. I'll give it back to you. Okay. Oh, I cannot get that off here. Because we need to get tight. It's tight. Okay. Thanks, hon. Oh, okay. Oh, I don't know. Okay. <clears throat> Everybody's going to take a stone and pass my little, uh, box of stones along. How did you guys like that eye gazing? Was it weird? Was it cool? Intense. It was intense. And like, yeah, so. and like the, um, I mean, like we're best friends. We know each other for forever. Right. And yet that was really intimate though. Is even though we've known each other, I've known her since she was 14, even though we've known each other for that long. Mm -hmm. um, it was still like a new level of intimacy that we had not experienced before. That was kind of weird. Yeah, well, it was a new time. <laughs> That's neat. It was great. Did you guys hear what they said? They said that even though they've known each other for years, they're best friends for years, they'd never done anything like that, and it was intense. Yeah, when you said something about, think about sadness, it's like I immediately saw it in her eyes, and I just was like, I want to give her a hug. So it was, it was really. <laughs> did that, did that make you tear up? A little bit. A little bit? <laughs> when, when they're teaching counselors to, uh, at counselor school, one of the um, counseling modalities is called psychoanalytic theory and the counselor does not speak. They're just fully present, that's it. They don't ever talk. That's Anybody great. else? What that was like for what was that like for you? We're str we were strangers, mm -hmm. until we met in your booth, and um, I could see. First, I felt more grounded by looking into her left eye, mm. and it opened up into. Um, I can't think of the name of the film, 
but Robin Williams was in it, and there's all of this oh, nature. Oh, what dreams oh, what dreams Thank you. That's my yeah. And that's where I went. Oh. It was beautiful. Really wow. Very it felt really good. You saw the riches in Donna's eyes. It was more like a portal. For both of your, a portal. It was a portal. Yeah, it was That's a portal. neat. Yeah. I know what you mean. It was good. Thanks really. for doing that. <laughs> so now, everybody's, yes. Well, we're neighbors. We've known each other for 10 years now. And uh -huh. we text most of the time. And so Daughter was back and forth. But um, now her daughter never noticed just how dark. dark. Yeah. So that's how dark. How dark brown her yeah, eyes are? Anybody in today's society oh. is so hard because we're looking down on our phones. We're, <laughs> yeah. we're just looking present with anybody. And it's, it's so nice that we actually just stop. Yes. We look and imagine if we just stop and look at our kids. Yes. How often do we just stop and look at our kids? I, I try. Or to, anybody. But it's, we don't. I notice because I'm like, stop. I always go to my daughter. Let's look. Let's look. And right. It's very realistic because it's hard to do. Right. I asked a dad one time who came in, his kid, his uh, son was having some emotional difficulties. And I said to the dad, how often do you get eye contact with him? And the dad goes like this, almost never. I have to like grab him by the arms and say, look at me when I'm talking to you. Yeah. And I'm like, I, I don't mean that kind of eye contact. <laughs> you don't mean like that. I mean the unconditional love kind of eye contact. Okay, we're about to do another exercise, so thank you for doing that. Now, one of my favorite biggest things that I teach, in fact, if you guys text me, um, my cards and uh, information is up here. If you text me and say, hi Jane, it's Joe, send me the healthy communication video. I will send you my healthy communication video for free. Everyone else in the world has to pay for it, but you get it for free, okay? So um, this is, I didn't make this up. Talking stick is a Native American tradition that counselors stole and renamed reflective listening. Now, one of the biggest problems with kids is that the parents don't listen. I'll say that again. One of the biggest problems with kids is that their parents don't listen. <laughs> what's, what's one of the things that, <laughs> he said what? What's one of the biggest problems that parents have a, complaints about their kids? Okay, they don't listen. They don't listen. <laughs> they don't listen. Are you listening to them? No? Okay, so I'm gonna give you a way, and we're gonna practice it right now with your eye contact buddy and um, talking stick technique. So you'll see, when you, I'm gonna give you a really abbreviated version of this, but when you see my video, you'll see it more in detail. But I want you to talk to your buddy, if you don't know your buddy, I want you to talk to your buddy as if they are somebody that you know, that you know you really need to talk to that won't listen to you. And there's something you really need to get off your chest to this person, okay? Now normally when you're doing this home, you have more time. But in here, we're just going, going to do two or three sentences, and um, you'll decide in a minute who's going first. You say two or three sentences. They're short sentences so that the listener can repeat back what you said. So you got your stone, you have your talking stick, stone, it's a stone. A talking stick can be anything. This is mine, so if you ever come to see me for counseling, you get to use this one. It's sparkly. It's sparkly, it's very sparkly. So do you like that? Do you wanna use mine? Do you wanna use mine for your talking, for your practice right now? Okay, there you go. Oh. <laughs> so anything can be a talking stick. So. Um, the listener is the healer, so you're relaxing in a state of compassion. <sighs> you're just compassionate, okay? And you're just repeating it back everything the other person says word for word. You're just gonna change you to me and me to you. So if, some, if your partner says, you broke my heart when you forgot our anniversary last week, you're going to say, I, oh, is that it? Today's your anniversary. <gasps> Happy anniversary! Oh. You broke my heart when you forgot our anniversary today. <laughs> oh, good, good. <laughs> then you're gonna get the stick or the stone and you're gonna say, I broke your heart when I forgot our anniversary last week. Now, um, you guys are lucky this is the first of the gifts that I'm giving you today. You get to keep your stone. Stones are really grounding and they're like good for your soul. Yes. 
is good for your soul just to have a stone. Okay, so you can use this for your talking stick at home until you get your own talking stick. That one I'm getting back though. My sparkly <laughs> wand. That's why she likes it. Kids like my sparkly wand. So <clears throat> then we always close with a compliment, but um, we're just going to do the first part first, and then I'll direct you when we're going to change. So turn toward your buddy, decide who's going to go first, and remember, listen, if you know this person, tell them something real, like maybe a problem or something that hurt your heart, made you scared, mad, sad, something real, and let them repeat it back to you, okay? Two or three sentences. Go ahead, just do that part, and then we'll go to the next part next. No, just do the first part where you express your pain. <laughs> and once that part is done, then please go to silence. Yes, you can have a rock. Let's get you a rock. Come here, let's get you a rock. <laughs> Does anybody know where my rocks went? My box of rocks? Has anybody seen my box of rocks? Oh, let's get you a box. Let's get you. Thank you. Okay, pick out your favorite rock, okay? You can spread them on the table there if you need to. Okay, did everybody do your two or three sentences? Okay, now stepping into the silence. <clears throat> okay, now, whenever you do this, every time you do this, the person who's speaking is complaining. You hurt me, or you made me scared, or sad, or mad. We always close with a compliment, because both sides are all true. We always have to look at the entire picture. This person is not all bad. So now, if you're talking to a person that you're in a relationship with, you're gonna give them a real actual compliment. And if you were speaking to a stranger that you just met, you can do both if you want. You can give a real compliment to the person that you were imagining they were, and you can also give the listener a compliment for listening. Okay, so go ahead and do the compliment part. <laughs> you're gonna tell them something that you love about them. Not I, not I still love you. It's a real compliment. <laughs> okay. Let me see which one you got. Oh, that is beautiful. Wow, that's lovely. Good, good choice. They're for you to keep and have in your heart and use whenever you can't get your parents to listen to you. Where's your heart at? Is it right here? here? Your heart? Your real live heart is somewhere around there. But people usually point to their kind of imaginary heart, like whenever you feel sad and you're in pain right there in the center. Okay. Okay. Thank you. What's your name? Carter. Carter. Nice to meet you, Carter. Okay, and you did the compliment part now, right? Good. Okay. Now you get to switch. The other person gets to either imagine that you're somebody they need to talk to, or if you're in a relationship, have a real conversation with this person that you're sitting in front of. So one or two or three sentences about something that's bugging you. Go ahead.
<laughs> okay, is that part done? Everybody's complete? You don't believe in cracked windows? No. Okay. Okay. So now, second person close with a compliment to your listener. Okay. Good. <laughs> okay, now everybody back up here, please. Just stay where you are if you moved your seat. Stay with, stay with the person that you're with. Who feels uh, better? or closer with the person that you just talked to? New friend. <laughs> you have a new friend. <laughs> now, the uh, talking stick or reflective listening technique is something that I use all the time, practically every day, with couples and families. And I make them take the talking stick vow. It's a promise to use the talking stick instead of yelling and screaming or not speaking, because that's what people do. I call it the bark and run. Yeah. Bark and run, advance withdraw. It's from your, our stupidest brain, our animal brain. You don't want your dumbest brain running your most important relationships. So if you are willing to take this talking stick vow, raise your right hand. And repeat after me. I, and then state your name. I do hereby vow to use the talking stick instead of fighting like stupid babies and then shake your partner's hand. Okay, good. Now, one last little exercise we're going to do. Please look back into the eyes of your buddy and listen to this song.
It's a better place since you came along. Go get a hug or a fist bump. <laughs> So good. Do you have any what? Tissues. Candy? I do. Tissues. I do have candy. Oh, tissues. Oh, I told them we were going to need tissues in here. I told them we were going to need tissues. Okay. You're welcome. That was good. So the, what you felt right now, just now, with a stranger and what you felt with somebody that you maybe know that you came here with, that's how fast uh, we can get a heart and soul connection and that's how hungry, thirsty we are for it. We're aching for it, that's presence where you get really into your heart and just really connect with someone. It's a big deal. It's the only deal. It's the only big deal in the world. So when you're going through your day and something feels like a big deal, just stop and think about what the real big deal is. Yeah. So thanks for doing that. Now, we have about 10 minutes left, and I want to open the floor to see if you have any parenting questions and see if I can help you out with anything, just raise your hand, question. Okay, so um, I know that you spoke earlier about, you know, having like, my other two kids are perfect and they're well behaved and then my next one is just all over the place. I kind of have that issue. Mm -hmm. um, I have, my nine year old is perfect angel, helpful, everything else like that. My two year old, mm -hmm. she was named after the Viking goddess of love and battle, Freya, and she acts like it. <laughs> you did um, that, Mom. <laughs> yeah, I did that to my Here's mom. your name. <laughs> um, so my problem is, is that I'm having a lot of problems with um, things that she should have conquered technically by now. Mm. Um, she's not doing any potty training. She just refuses. Oh. Um, going oh. to bed is just that yes. such a problem. Going to bed. Okay. I have to, like, sit on her. Yes, okay, let's talk about that. This is a really good one. Okay, so little ones who are wild banshees who won't do what they're supposed to be doing. Okay, so chapter 10 in my book is always the chapter I tell parents to read, the, read first. It's called Yes After You, the solution to all your problems. So the yes after you is a way to reconcile head and heart. Is there anybody here who does not like chocolate? Raise your hand if you don't like chocolate. You don't like chocolate. Now, Carrie, I should have brought you some flan. So don't <laughs> like child. He doesn't like chocolate. She likes flan. OK, you get an Altoid. You get an Altoid. You get a car. You get a car. <laughs> so um, OK. So um, I could say, eat your pe I just did a talk. There's a, I have a YouTube channel if you guys want to see this talk. Um, there's a background of sky, blue, clouds. And um, I say, you could say, Eat your peas or you're not getting any dessert. Or I could say, I made your special dessert. I got your favorite dessert for you. Chocolate flan. <laughs> <laughs> I got flan on the brain now. <laughs> and right after you're finished eating your peas, I'm going to give you some chocolate flan. So um, I'm going to talk about this in two aspects. One is bedtime, 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 bedtime. So bedtime is sometimes a big deal because it's a petite mort. It's a tiny death. And it's letting go of the day and whoosh, and adults, a lot of adults can't go to sleep. So with little kids, we have to have a routine. You, you, I'm going to tell you a bunch of stuff that you already know. Have to have a routine. You have to have a, you know, we brush our teeth. But th you can have a reward every step of the road. Get in your bed, and I have a special surprise for you. And it's their favorite book, and it's a chapter. Like I used to uh, make my kids. When I was fresh out of college when I was a kid, when I was 20, I had a dorm full of um, kids that were at a boarding school for naughty kids. And to get them all to go to bed, they were from 10 years old all the way up. To, they were from fifth grade to uh, high school, 12th grade, graduation. 15, girls, they were all mine on a co-ed campus. 
And I would start them on something like, oh, she's too little, she's too. Um, I would start them on a book and they would get addicted and I'd, st I'd stop at a cliffhanger and I'd say, okay, I'm ready to bed. They'd be like, no, Jane. And I'd say, you can hear tomorrow night. And they would like brush their teeth and get in their PJs and run with their pillows to the common room. But a little two-year-old, so at age two is the first process of individuation. And um, you know, if I'm talking too fast and I miss any, skip anything, or if something you didn't get or you want to know more about, text me or call me or message me on Facebook because, and we'll talk, we'll talk in private or come in and do a session. But um, so uh, if you make it through the first process of individuation relatively unscathed, you'll have an easier time during the second process of individuation, which is puberty. So we want to not battle. We want to not battle. Okay. So if there's a thing that she likes and you say, what's her name, Freya? Freya. Freya. Freya, I have a special surprise for you. You want a special surprise? Will she get that? Like, what's a special yeah. surprise for her? Um, Stickers? It could be anything, sti I mean, St anything really. Uh-huh. Like, bubble, so easy. Oh. Like, at my place, because I have so many kids in my life and clients' kids, and I want everybody to obey me. So I have lots of stickers and I have sparkly gems and, who wants a sparkly gem? Okay, if you want a sparkly gem, go through my bag and pick out your favorite sparkly gem. I have stickers, sparkly gems, I have lots of little things. And I have parents who say, I'm not gonna bribe my kid to do what they should be doing anyway, and I'm like, we get bribed to do what we should be doing. Anyway. You get paid to wear your job. <laughs> and not only that, but this is a spirit that you plucked from the heaven. It was happy up there. I don't have to do any homework. I get to hang out with spirit and God, whatever you believe in. And you pulled me down out of heaven and you put me here? What? It's too hot. It's too cold. I have to wake up. I don't want to wake up. It was her choice. No, it was, it was Freya's <laughs> yeah. choice. She you, came. She I'm coming. Came. Yeah. I'm coming. She was one of those. But so, I mean, they didn't ask to come here and be put to work, homework, school, make your bed, clean your room, eat your peas, all that crap. They didn't, they, they didn't ask. We're making them. <laughs> making them do all that stuff. So you can, you can be the, you know, you can be the fish wife. It's a bad word for it. You can be the, you know, the witch whose voice is like, clean up your room, go to bed. Or you can be the song, you can use the song of the sirens. You guys know the sirens, the cousins to the mermaids? And they lived out on the rocks and their voices were so beautiful. All they had to do was sing their song and the sailors would leap off the ship to their death and they would have them forever. And that's how you do it. I had a mom, this works on, I was telling these guys, it works on your kids and it works on your, your husband too. <laughs> like I used to have this really cool, long time ago, this big, women's group, and, uh, or maybe it was the parenting group, because I've had both. And this one woman, I asked for problems, and this one woman said, my husband will never mow the lawn. And he's a great man, he's a hardworking man, he works all week long, and he, he says, I'll do it. But on the weekends, he's exhausted, and he doesn't do it, but he won't let me hire lawn care, because he's like, I can do it, but he doesn't. And our lawn looks like hell. And so I came up with a yes after you for her. <clears throat> so the yes after you works backwards and forwards and on men and children. It works on women too, it's just. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we're, we're usually doing everything. <laughs> it's a bad mom mistake. You're already doing everything. You're, it was a bad mom mistake. <laughs> so um, <laughs> so the, the, kid, the kid can say to you, I want, it, I want these new jeans, or um, you know, I want soap bubbles, and you say, you can either say, you're not getting any soap bubbles until you get in bed, or you can say, I would love to give you soap bubbles right after you get in bed. You see the difference? There's a smile in my heart. So the woman came back the next week, and she said, uh, I said, how did it go? Because I helped her come up with a yes after you for her husband to mow the lawn. <laughs> she said, it went great. She said, I did just what you said. He was laying on the couch, like with his beer, exhausted from this week, and I said, you know, honey, it really turns me on when you mow the lawn and your muscles are sticking out like that, you're all sweaty and everything. And she goes, he mowed the lawn twice in one week. <laughs> the yes after you. <laughs> Any other, you had a question, you have a question? 
Motivated. Motivated. What inspires them? What inspires uh, who you're talking about? What's your passion? Yeah. Having fun. You know, I was thinking about that. What's your name? My name's Cassandra. Cassandra. I was thinking about this this morning. I've been thinking about you guys for two months. I've been thinking about you since I agreed to come here and do this talk. And think when I know I'm going to, you know, be of service in, in a particular way, I am really open to whatever comes in. And this random thing popped into my head this morning. I was thinking about kittens and puppies and how... Does anybody have kittens or puppies or ever had kittens Puppy, and puppies? Puppies. What do they do all the time? Play, 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 play and sleep. You. Play and sleep. And love you. Yeah. Play and sleep. And eat. <laughs> play and sleep and eat and potty and play. And but, but they want to play. They naturally play. Don't they naturally play? Yes. And then we train it out of you. You're like that when you're a kid. You're naturally playing. And then we train it out of you, and then, we, and then we have this epidemic of depression, and all these people on Zoloft, and what else, what, whatever, whatever. So we train it out. So, but to motivate for kids, so one thing I really believe in is, no homework, I really like Montessori and Waldorf schools, and um, I really believe in incentives, so the yes after you. So, I mean, this bag of precious gemstones that are worth millions of dollars that I just gave you, I get like a bag for 99 cents at Sass or Michael's. I give stickers, I give, and when my kids start to get like they're expecting a thing, you know, or a nickel or a quarter to, or a hour, <laughs> and I mix it up and I just give them a hug some days and like, what, just a hug? And I'm like, yeah, here's another, it's free. <laughs> this one you don't even have to do anything for. So, <laughs> so I really believe in. Does that help? Yes. Yes, yes ma'am. Yeah, you. Yeah, you. Um, you there. Thank you. Um, I have an issue with my daughter who is like hers, headstrong and motivation. She's extremely motivated, does a lot, and she's in Montessori as well. Uh -huh. um, but one thing is, I have chronic illness, and um, uh, which is nice. Seems to forget because I hide it a lot. But when, I'm, when I have my clothes and I'm yeah. down, it's hard. Yeah. Like, op opposition to the client with me only, but no mm -hmm. one else. Right. And it's hard for me. I, that's when I start doing the yelling uh -huh. instead of thinking. Right. Any right. suggestions for me? Yes. When I'm in, those, in that position, because my head is just not out. For sure. So when, when you're a strong, do you do the mom mistake of when you are feeling good? You're last. Everybody else is before you. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because I'm so excited that I'm feeling. Yeah. That, I'm feeling that you want to do. Yeah. Yeah. Do. yeah. So the, the yes after you isn't the cure to everything, but it's the cure to a lot of things. And the talking stick is the cure for kind of the rest of it. But I want, especially moms, watch yourself for this. It's a common mom mistake to put yourself last. To not have me time, to not say, hey, sweetie, come over here and help me chop the you know, carrots, or you set the table, or I have a surprise for you. Help me, you know, after you're done doing the dishes, come and get me. I get, I get a big surprise for you. you know, I'll be in here uh, wiping down the table, and we'll sing a song together while you're doing the dishes. And I want you to get used to, see, my generation did up for everybody after us women because of women's liberation. My generation, I'm 57, so everybody after me, my generation uh, caused a bunch of masculinization of women. We're very masculinized. You don't have to do that for me. I can do that for myself. What do you think? I'm a weak, wimpy, you know, wuss. I'm, I can do that for myself. I can pay the bill. I can blah, 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 don't hold the door. Yeah, it's a bad habit. There's an audio download on my website you maybe want to get. You guys should get my downloads right now because my business manager told me my prices are too low. They're like less than five bucks. There's a download called <clears throat> Don't Chase Love, Inspire Desire. Don't Chase Love, Inspire Desire. It's powerful and it'll teach, it teaches women how to relax into the strong feminine so that you can just magnetically attract everything that you need in terms of love and support. So it sounds like from what you're, tell me your name again? Rachel. Rachel, Rachel. You're, it sounds like you're doing a, um, 
you're at two extremes. When, you're not fe when you are feeling well, you're doing, and you're in the masculine, so no one's learning how to serve you. That's not good for any beloveds around you, any beloved you may have. It's not good for the kids. Yeah. The mom is the hub of the wheel, the well, out of which everyone drinks. If mom ain't happy, ain't nobody happy. Hmm. Did that ring a bell for you? <laughs> Was that, oh, oh. <laughs> okay. I have to retraining. I have to retrain myself. To it's hard. It's a very out of control feeling yeah, to not be doing, doing, doing. Yes. Yes, ma'am. 14 year old boy mm -hmm. um, living with his mom and threatens her with, I'm going to run away and move in with my father unless you promise to give me a car when I'm 16. Hmm. Mm hmm. Well, he's 14. Okay. I would say do a lot of talking stick because if a kid, um, goes straight to a threat, give me what I want or I'm leaving, that means there's a connection, there's a gap there in the connection. There needs to be a stronger connection. And um, I'm, I'm glad you said that too, Purple, because I want you guys to know, parents, when you start doing talking stick with your kids, I want you to start by, in the beginning, just be the listener. Don't take your turn to talk when you're doing the talking stick. And just listen, 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 and find out who they are and why they're going, why he would be going straight to that. Um, okay, while we're doing this last question, okay? While we're doing this last question, everybody gets two kisses. My box of kisses is going around. Yes, ma'am, one last question. Yeah, um, so I have a four month old little boy, and I've been told a lot that I'm holding him too much. Oh, you're holding your baby like, too much? Is, That's is what? there a, such a thing as that I've been told? It's your first baby? First yeah. baby. First baby? <laughs> I told her that. Like, I've, I've had my parents so don't worry about it. That you're it's spoiling and that they I need to learn to kind of move up. But like, <laughs> at what point does it become too much? If you're holding your baby. Never. If you're holding your baby or petting your puppy too much. So here's the thing. Here's just my opinion about this. A person isn't spoiled. A child. A child isn't spoiled because, okay, let me back up. <laughs> that is a first time parent common thing T to hold the first baby a lot. Like my firstborn nephew that my first younger brother had, that kid's feet never touched the ground, I swear, for two years until his sister was born. That kid's feet never touched the ground. Never <laughs> touched the ground. Never touched the ground. You got to check in with you if you feel like you're. Um, doing something too much. Th there's, of course, there's a happy extreme to everything. And, but I don't like that other people, I had a client one time, this is the funniest comparison, but <coughs> my client had a dog, a dog, a little dog, and she held it and petted it all the time. And she, and she was a, she was a 20 year old, 21 year old woman, and she lived with her mother. And her mother constantly said, stop petting that dog so much, stop petting your dog. You're spoiling the dog. I'm not gonna pet him when you're around. I'm not gonna be petting him all the time. I'm not gonna do that. I'm like, fine. You have one relationship with your child and your child has a different relationship with every other human being they'll ever meet. And everybody's boundaries are gonna be different. Some people are gonna wanna carry him around a lot and some people are gonna wanna pet him a lot and some people are gonna be like, no, you stay right there. You can walk your own self around. And so you do what you want and if you feel, and, Tell your mom, so I want to give you a stock response that you can give to people that are interfering, meddling, people that are meddling in your life. Yes, you do. You're, there's four stock statements. I honor your truth. Thank you for your opinion. I'm sorry you feel that way, and why do you ask? I honor your truth. Thank you for your opinion. I'm sorry you feel that way. Why do you ask? Don't ever explain yourself, because you're an adult. You don't have to explain yourself. OK, one last thing, OK? And by the way, you guys don't hesitate to um, call me or text me or message me or friend me on Facebook. I'm passing these little guys around. I'm going to hang on to one and pass, pass the rest with you. I'm going to take the top one. I want you guys to, this has my, my, my address. Come over to my house for dinner tomorrow. Yay, what um, are you making? <laughs> 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 That's good. So 
In two weeks, I'm doing my uh, beloved relationship retreat. Now you may or may not be in a beloved relationship. You can come to this with a friend if you want to do exer heart opening exercises that will cause you to be ma more magnetically attractive. There's, there's only like two sexy things that we do in this workshop, and those you don't have to do with your friend. Who, one's a homework assignment, <laughs> one's a home play assignment, and one is a um, kissing activity. But that's the sexiest thing that we do in this workshop. It's an in-town retreat. You don't have to sleep over. And um, only the people that met me here are going to uh, be able to get the $150 discount that just went away last week. So if you sign up for this, message me, text me at this number and say, Jane, I met you at the expo. And don't forget, give me the 150 off. So um, if you could just one or two or three people tell me what you got today that was helpful. Um, I started to have an anxiety attack when I first got in here. And then I listened to you and it went away. Wow. Yeah. Was it anything in particular that we were That's talking about? I was having a hard time walking over here. <laughs> Put the chair and everything. Oh, oh, that was big. That was good. Yeah. What, what calmed it down? Anything in particular? Um, just the over, um, where you give that voice, you call him, I think it was a motherfucker, so I kept calling it a motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <boy. laughs> wow, you kept on telling the mean liar voice off. Yeah. <laughs> wow, Antonio. That's awesome. That's the first time I've done that, though. That's crazy. Bravo. Yeah. That's crazy cool. Yeah. Thanks. Yes? Kind of with the same activity, I, because I also struggle with anxiety, but with my anxiety, I tend to push it all back until I break down crying. Oh, yeah. So giving it a name and bringing it to the front was really helpful for me to realize what my issues a, are. I'm sorry, can I give a suggestion? Um, uh, can, can talk about it out loud. Can you guys talk get after? The, oh, I'm sorry. But get it out in the open. And That's a good idea. Open, and also just because. less power. That's what I was thinking. Right. This exercise yeah, yeah, yeah. We're so far over time. Sorry. So, so good. Why don't you, you guys should talk. Trade fun. Yeah. Get it out <laughs> oh. off your chest. That was good. Yes. The uh, yes then. Yes after you. Yes after you. Oh, I'm going to try that with my daughter today. Let's see how it goes. Let me know how it goes. Okay. Good. Yes. Donna. Jane, I was just going to ask you. The powerful piece for me was what you said at the very end. I honor you or honor myself. The, oh, I, I honor your truth. I honor, you. I honor your truth. When somebody's meddling and telling you what yes. you should do. Yes. I honor I, your I, truth. I, I don't have to. Yeah, that's yours. Yes. I ain't mine. It's <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. It's like permission. Thank you. Right. Yeah, yeah totally. Yes, ma'am. I got to have an amazing experience with this lovely lady I've never Who you met just met. Today. Yes. 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 Yeah. So good. I adore her already. <laughs> I know she's lovely, isn't she? She is. I just met her today day, too. So thank you. Every oh, yes. Go ahead. One last one. I, I think you mentioned um, giving your kids your happiness. <laughs> giving your kids your happiness? When they're not listening. Oh, yeah. Coming from that with a smile in your heart. <laughs> yeah. With a smile in your heart. Yes. And don't leave with my stick. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, everybody. I had a wonderful time. Thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it.